Hello, and welcome to the third and final part of the Insonic Mirage HXC floppy drive emulator series. In this video, I'll be going over the process of creating disk images for the emulator as well as the software and operation of the emulator itself. The emulator requires either an SD card or USB drive depending on the model used, and only the SD card models are writable, giving you the ability to save any changes you make to the images from the sampler. We'll start with the creation of the disk images for the emulator. If you already have images ready to use, you can skip to the timestamp shown below for instructions on using the emulator software. To rip our own disks, we'll be using a program called Omniflop, which can be found at the following website. Omniflop is a somewhat older program used for reading non-Windows formatted floppy disks. If you already have a library of disks with your Mirage, this is the best way I've found to preserve them and bring them into the emulator. Unfortunately, to use Omniflop, you're going to need a computer with a built-in floppy drive one that is old enough to use a dedicated floppy drive ribbon cable and has the floppy disk controller chip on the motherboard. You cannot use a USB floppy drive as these drives don't have the hardware access necessary to read disks not formatted for Windows or Mac. Believe me, I tried. I'm using an HP Pavilion A6655F desktop from 2008 running Windows 7 32-bit. It has an Asus M2N68LA motherboard with a floppy drive connector located here and a floppy drive controller chip located here. If you have access to an older machine like this, congratulations! If not, you can purchase disk images on eBay or possibly find them online from other Mirage users, though these sources are unfortunately becoming unreliable. In order to use Omniflop to read Mirage disks, we will need to install Omniflop's extended floppy disk controller driver. This is a fairly straightforward process provided your operating system allows installation of unsigned drivers. Unsigned drivers are device drivers that haven't been run through Microsoft's certification process, which also costs money for the developers. The 32-bit version of Windows 7 does allow the installation of these drivers permanently, and while there is a 64-bit version of Omniflop, it is relatively untested and the driver is still unsigned. It is not possible to permanently install unsigned drivers on Windows 7 64-bit without third-party software. So here we have my imaging computer. As you can see, I've installed Windows 7 32-bit. If we open up Omniflop, you can see by using test installation that the floppy driver is not installed correctly. And you'll only be able to use these specific formats, none of which are the Insonic Mirage. Omniflop itself does not necessarily need to be installed to the computer, but the drivers do. To begin, extract the files to an accessible location. In this case, I've just put them on the desktop. Right-click my computer and navigate to Manage. Open the Device Manager. This will show you all the hardware connected to your machine. Open the Floppy Disk Drive menu. Right-click Floppy Disk Drive and select Update Driver Software. Then select Browse My Computer. Let me pick from a list. Select Have Disk, Browse, and navigate to the location that you save the files, in this case, the desktop. Select Omniflop, Open, OK, and then select the Omniflop Enhanced Floppy Disk Drive from the menu. You'll notice it says this driver is not digitally signed. Hit Next. It will install the drive successfully. Close this. Next up, we will be installing the Enhanced Floppy Drive Controller in the same way. Open the Floppy Drive Controller menu, right-click again, Update Driver Software, Browse My Computer, let me pick from a list, select Have Disk, Browse, and we want to open Omni FDC, or Omni Floppy Disk Controller. OK on that, select it from the list, Hit Next, and Windows will successfully install it. We are now done installing the floppy drivers. If we open Omniflop again and hit Test Installation, you can now see that the list has been populated with a much greater number of supported drives. And if we navigate down, the Insonic driver should be right around. Here, and Sonic Mirage 440 kilobytes. So now we know that our drivers have been installed correctly, we can move on to imaging a disk. With Omniflop open, hit Next, 
and we're going to select read disk. Floppy drive A, we can keep all these settings at their default, and we will be imaging in Sonic Sound Disk 4. Select next again, and the drive will begin reading the disk format. This may take a couple minutes. And there we have it, and Sonic Mirage, so it read the disk format correctly. Once this is done, we can hit next again, and choose where to put our disk image. Uh, we're just going to name it test for the time being, but if you hit browse, you can place it and name it anything you want. Uh, I'd suggest coming up with a decent organizational format for these, since having a lot of disks can get a little messy. And once that's done, Select Finish. It'll read the contents of the disk and place them on the desktop. We can use the repeat operation to do multiple disks up to as many disks as you have. Once our disk images have been created, we can move on to using the HXC Floppy Emulator software. Inside the archive downloaded from the website, you can find the HXC Floppy Emulator program here, simply called hxcfloppyemulator.exe. This is the program that we'll be using to convert our disk images, as well as setting up the settings for the emulator itself. For an SD card emulator, click here to configure the settings. The first ones you see here are simply cosmetic sound for the user interface, which will beep every time you press a button, head step sound, which will simulate floppy drive track reading, and scroll text speed, which simply controls the speed at which the text scrolls across the screen of the emulator itself. We also have a backlight standby timer and a device standby timer. If you so desire, you can have the emulator load the last loaded floppy drive upon power-up, but we're going to disable that for now. These other settings we don't have to worry about. If you would like the emulator to automatically boot from a certain floppy disk image, you can rename that image to autoboot.hfe and have it load that specific disk upon power up. Interface mode we can leave as auto, and the interface settings need to be changed from two drive emulation to single drive emulation, and it's simply going to be from HFE. Once our settings have been configured to our liking, we can select save config file and place the file in an easily rememberable location. In this case, I'm simply using the directory that we saved the actual software in. Select Save, and OK. As you can see, this created a configuration file that will be loaded onto the SD card for the emulator to read. Upon power up, the emulator will read from this particular file, and all of our settings will be applied. With the configuration of the emulator out of the way, we'll move on to the conversion of our disk images. Start by creating a folder with copies of your images. Then, rename them to something that is easily readable on the emulator screen and conveys the contents of each disk followed by a .edm. This is the Insonic Disk Manager file format that the emulator software can convert. Don't worry about the error messages, this is just Windows trying to hold your hand. We know what we're doing. And through the magic of editing, all of mine have been renamed. Once this is finished, open the emulator software and select Batch Convert. Select the folder containing your renamed images, then select the target directory, preferably a folder that is different from the ones containing the .img and .edm files. In this case, I'm just placing them into a folder called HFE files. Pressing convert will batch convert all the files in the selected folder from .edm to .hfe, the file format that the emulator reads. Once that is completed, move the converted files ending in .hfe to your SD card. You can also remove the underscore edm moniker from the end of the file name should you desire. 
and don't forget to include your configuration file as well. Once we have our disk images ready, we can move on to the operation of the emulator itself. Upon boot, the Mirage will flash the no disk message while it waits for a disk to be inserted. The left and right buttons on the emulator are used to cycle through disk images, while the center button is used for inserting and ejecting the selected image. Simply navigate to your desired disk by pressing the left or right buttons and then the center one to insert the virtual disk. The Mirage will then boot with this image. To change disks, simply press the center button again to eject the current virtual disk, navigate to the new one, and press the center button again to insert. Then load the sound as you normally would using the load upper and lower buttons. Now, you may be wondering, how do I create blank images to save new sounds? This can be done in two ways, both of which require either a physical or imaged copy of Ensonic's formatting disk, either FMT1 or FMT2. The first, easier method is to create a blank formatted diskette using the Mirage's original disk drive and formatting disk, and then use Omniflop to make an image of it. This image would then be converted like any other, after which you can save as many copies as you'd like to the SD card. The second method is a bit more involved and is more useful if you already have the emulator installed and your images created. Start by using a PC to create a copy of any existing disk image you already have and rename it to blank, then save it to your SD card. Boot the Mirage with the formatting disk image, eject the image, scroll to your blank, and insert it. Run the formatting program by pressing 1 on the Mirage keypad, then enter. The formatting program will format the disk image. Once the formatting routine is finished, you can remove the SD card and use a PC to create as many copies of the blank as you might need. And thus, that brings us to the end of the series. Thank you so much for watching. These videos, despite the time it took between each one, were still a lot of fun to make, and I hope to make more of them for future projects, so please look forward to them. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments.